Good morning everyone, I believe we had a little technical difficulty with the sound and today we are offering this Mass for the departed soul of John Cahill and the Mass is offered by Teresa O'Dowd. Let us pray for this family, especially for uh, Pat and uh, her children. May God give them consolation, strength and healing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin to celebrate this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us praise and thank God for the gift of his faith. And also, as in the Gospel today, we continue to hear about his final words and the promise of sending the paraclete, the advocate or the Holy Spirit. Let us ask the Spirit of God to guide us today and the days to come. Lord Jesus, you promised us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to strengthen us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, it is in the promise of the Holy Spirit we are being empowered. Christ, have mercy. It is the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, will bring the gifts and fruits to become disciples of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul, Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God and even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them. But some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the response is heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lift, lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The 
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare it to you, to the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, a couple of days ago, the church rejoiced celebrating the 100th birthday anniversary of Pope John Paul II. He was truly, in the most difficult times, a great witness. He preached Christ, and he invited to a life of holiness. He traveled far and wide. His life was a legacy. And he walked through our communities. He presented, wherever he went, the gospel and the image of Christ. And he always boldly preached the gospel. His life was not easy. He was orphaned at the age of 20. And then he lived the time which was very difficult to practice his own faith freely. And at a moment, there was an attempt on his own life. And yet, he always called, do not be afraid. And the same thing we see in today's first reading. When Paul was invited to Athens, especially to this town, Areopagus, which was the most happening city at the time, culturally, politically, socially. And when Paul was invited... And he did not condemn them, but rather he said, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, and this is where he takes a lead. He says, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. And then from here, he presents the gospel and the Christ. And he shares his own personal relationship and the journey, how he was encountered, and then how that person became part of his life and his journey. And since he encountered Christ, how his life was totally changed, and then he travels around presenting Christ and his gospel. Paul had so much courage. Even in the most despair moments, his hope was the Lord. He would do anything to preach and to bring Christ and his message of the gospel. During these most troublesome times, one thing that is helping all of us is our faith. The faith that we practice, we profess in a known God is not an unknown God, but he is a known God. We have a relationship with him. That relationship gives us courage and hope. And he invites us, do not be afraid, for I am with you until the end of times. And all through Easter season, we have been listening to various activities of the apostles whether it is with Peter, Paul, or Mark, Barnabas, other apostles, we continue to listen how the Spirit of God was able to lead them, guide them. And the Spirit of God gave them also such courage to preach and to present Christ. And today, as we listen to the story of Paul, And towards the end, when Paul began to speak about the power of Christ's resurrection, 
And some of them said, you know, we have to talk about this again. And some of them started scoffing. But some believed and joined Paul and became believers. Probably when the first time gospel was presented to us, when we were little, we had no understanding of it. But as we began to grow, that gospel became very dear to us because it is the gospel about Christ. It is about a person. And that's why we have a relationship. We have experienced him time and again. Even in the most difficult times, we have this person who has comforted us, who has shown tremendous love for us. And that is what the cross of Christ reminds us, that I have died for you because I loved you. And I wanted you to inherit what my father has prepared for you. It is a tremendous sacrifice. And this is the message Paul continued to present wherever he traveled. It was not the message of Paul or about his journeys, but he always presented Christ and the gospel. And that's why during these uncertain times, the gospel always comes to aid us, fill us with hope, assurance, and invites us to believe in this gospel and the person who is presented to you. And today in the <clears throat> gospel reading, Jesus tells the apostles, there are many more things I wanted to tell you, but you will not be able to endure it. But I will send you the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God will tell you, and the Spirit of God will guide you, will empower you, and you will become my witnesses here on earth. Each one of us are given that gift and that grace to be living in the presence of the Spirit. So today, let us pray for ourselves who are given the gift of the gospel and the Holy Spirit, that what we reflect may be the works of the Spirit in the communities. May God, strength, may God strengthen us, and may God also give us inspiration. I also invite you to specially thank God for the gift of uh, St. John Paul II. Especially, he emphasized time and again on the family life, and he said, if family goes away, a nation goes away, and the community goes away, the whole world goes away. He believed so much in the occasion and strength of a family life. And he also had a, d a deep heart for young men and women. He was the one who called these youth, uh, World Youth Days. Millions of youth would attend for wherever he organized it. He called them to a life of holiness. So today let us pray for all young men and women of our church that they may have the strength and courage to accept the life of holiness and be reflections of the gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Guided by the spirit of truth, let us present our prayers and petitions. For those who lead the church in Christ's name, for the Spirit's gift of humility, we pray. For preachers and teachers among the faithful, for attention to guidance of the Spirit, we pray. For catechumens and all who seek deeper faith for hearts warmed by the Spirit's fire, we pray. For young people and all discerning their place in God's plan, for visions of the future promised by God, we pray. For the sick and for all struggling with more than they can bear, for the spirit of strength and healing, we pray. At this moment, let us pray for our own personal needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Today's Mass is offered for the departed soul of John Cahill, offered by Teresa O'Dowd. Let us pray asking God to grant eternal rest to John. 
and bring consolation, healing to Pat and her children. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, God of glory, and pour forth upon us your spirit of truth. May we declare what the spirit reveals, and so share with all we meet your shining love revealed in Christ. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands are made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, which earth is given and human hands are made. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you please for the sacrifice which we offer. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of living, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere. But in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed the Holy One, Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. 
in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, a spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As one God's family, as one community, pray the words Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you, peace be with you. Lamb of God, this many of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us, let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended in peace, love, and God's mercy. Just a gentle reminder, tomorrow we will be celebrating the solemnity of the ascension of our Lord. So please, if you have a moment, take part in the Mass and receive the blessings. You all have a blessed day.